and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where as you might be able to tell if you're a regular to the channel, I do have a bit of a cold, so apologies if my voice is in a strange key compared to usual. Um, anyway, we're not going to let that get in the way of Sudoku fun, and today we've got, I think, a debut on the channel uh, for Chris Moore and a puzzle called Think Outside the Cage. Um, now this was recommended to us very recently and we checked it out on Logic Masters Germany where it has a 100% approval rating. Um, so I want to give it a go. I read the rules and thought that sounds really interesting. Um, you can, and I'll tell you, this one involves pentominoes today as well as Sudoku. So we should be in for some fun and I'll read you the rules in just a second. Um, now, what do I want to mention other than that? Oh, if you own any of our apps, and hopefully you do, you should really check them out if you've, if you've not looked at them. They're all handcrafted puzzles, and we're very proud of them. And um, we've been steadily updating them over the last few weeks. So if you do own any of them, make sure you've got them up to date. You may well find there are some new puzzles there. Uh, we, we just updated Miracle, I know that, in the last couple of days and Killer Sudoku as well. There is a new update on that in the works. Um, other than that, we are working hard on other apps. I know we often get questions about what's your next app going to be. Well, we have two apps that sort of are bubbling along. One is a gas app, so genuinely approachable Sudoku, uh, which we've been working on with, with Clover, Sam, and Philip from the Discord server. So that's gonna be awesome. And the other is the Kropke XV app, which I sort of want to call Domino Sudoku, because of course in Kropke and XV, it's dominoes that are affected. Um, but we're working on that one too. Um, now, other than that, what to mention, Monday night is gonna be Bubba is You night. So if you've been enjoying any of the live streams, um, then that's the night that Mark and I are gonna be making our next uh, attempt at this incredibly clever and difficult puzzle game, uh, 10 p.m. UK time is the time that will happen. And other than that, just Patreon. We have been, a few more answers have been coming in to the Sudoku hunt themed on the rule set lockout lines. Um, all of the feedback has been incredible and well done to any of you who've solved all of the puzzles. I think there are 16 puzzles in all, particularly the last one is fairly vicious. Um, and we're gonna be picking out a name on the 20th of October to win a Bubba Is You key. Um, so all that said and done, Let's get on with Chris Moore's puzzle and I'll read you the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Along thermometers, digits increase from the bulb end. I'm just checking, yeah, we have only got one thermometer in fact, so we'll just, let's pause there and check we understand how thermometers work. Basically, whatever we put in that square, let's put a four in this square. This square now has to be higher than four because we must increase as mercury would increase as the temp temperature increases along a thermometer. So digits must increase along Sudoku thermometers. So that's, that could be a six. And now this square's just got to be higher than six. So let's make it nine. Four, six, nine would be an absolutely adequate way to fill a thermometer. Um, now, more rules. The white cells must be tiled with one copy each of the 12 possible pentominoes. So let's, again, I, I managed to find a, a good list of pentominoes here. If you're not familiar with them, basically this is every way you can connect five cells together uh, with, a, with a shape that's different. So uh, if we could consider shapes the same, if you can rotate or reflect them, these are the 12 different pentominoes you can, you can form. And they all have basically a letter that approximates to their, their shape. And if, you're, if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, you'll probably be very familiar with these letters. But basically what we've got to do is to put one each of these shapes into the white cells of this grid. Pres yeah, presumably perfectly, it says the white cells must be tiled with one copy each of the 12 possible pentominoes. If a pentomino contains a cell with a small clue in its top left corner, it cells sum to that number, right? So that let's imagine we drew, I don't know, an L pentomino there. Maybe I'll do a simpler L. That's, that's a more normal looking L. Then if this was a pentomino, because there's a 24 in one of its cells, these five cells that are highlighted would have to sum to 24. Uh, oh, digits in a pentomino may repeat if otherwise allowed. So these are, this is quite interesting. So these aren't forming killer Sudoku cages. Remember, when I've seen this rule set before, often 
um, the digits or the, the clue digit is telling you these five cells sum to 24 without a repeated digit. That is not the case in this puzzle. So it would be possible in if this was indeed a pentomino for this digit to repeat in one of those three cells. So we're going to have to bear that in mind. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. I'll try and remember to put some pentominoes on the screen as well uh, during editing, but um, otherwise I'm going to have to just remember remember this, which shouldn't be too difficult. Anyway, let's get cracking and see how we go. So where are my eyes drawn first? 41 seems absurdly high for a pentomino clue. Um, and I say that because, or well, maybe I'm saying that because I can... You know, let's imagine this was an I pentomino. Oh, actually, that's a good thought. I do have to put an I pentomino into this puzzle. Oh, well, I mean, it might... Well, it's not the 41, actually. I don't actually know where the I is going. But I think there are some... It's probably... Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, it could be there. Look, that could be the I. And that could be a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 uh, quintuple that would add to 35. And that would force this to be five cells adding to 23, which is possible. So anyway, anyway, I'm getting distracted. Um, the thing about five cells in a row is now these have to be five different digits. And five different digits only sum to 35. So this 41 pentomino has repeated digits in it. Um, now... How many repeated digits does it have? It's got to have two repeated digits, doesn't it? Because if it only has one repeated digit, if we made this an L looking like this, and said this digit was repeated in one of those three cells, then these cells would max out at 6, 7, 8, 9, which is 30, plus 9 is 39, which is not as big as 41. So there must, in fact, be two repeated digits in this 41 cage. Presumably, yeah, they've got to include a 9. 9. Oh, you could you have three repeated digits. Is that possible? I'm just, let me just think about that. Is it possible to repeat three digits in any, in any pentomino shape? Um... The answer to that might be yes. I guess an F might be able to. You could have like a digit here, a digit here, if that was in a different box of the Sudoku, and a digit here. Other than that, it's quite tricky to see how to... Well, the, the problem is that the, the Sudoku geometry is really going to... Yeah, in fact, if you think about it, in order to have three different digits in a pentomino, we've got to touch three different boxes of the Sudoku. And that doesn't seem to be terribly easy, especially not from this cell, because... This cell is not available to me. So how could I possibly touch three different boxes from this cell using just five connected orthogonal five cells connected orthogonally? You can't do it. Well, no, you can do it obviously like that, but we've already ruled that out. That would add that would add up to a maximum of 35. There's because this cell is inaccessible, I can't reach any other box. I can reach this box. I can reach this box. Um, but that's not going to work because these four digits obviously can't contain a repeat and this would be the only possibility of a repeated digit. And if I reach that box, it has to be an I. So this is... This is... It has to achieve 41 using only two boxes. And if it's only two boxes, we can't use three nines. And if, it, if we can't use three nines, 
double nine double seven is not enough because that only adds up to 32 and you need the other digit to be a nine. So we now know the digits that appear in this 41 pentomino. It is two nines, two eights and a seven. And that does add up to 41. So all we've got to do now is work out the shape of this. And we know that it's got to have three digits in one box and two digits in another box because we need to repeat two digits. So, hmm, so it could be something like that, I think. Or it could be something like that also. Or it could be, is there anything else we could do? We can't do L like that because L like that is all in the same box. So if we do L, we have to come downwards, I think. If we do T, oh, no, that's interesting. If we do T, you can't do T like that because then these four cells are in one box of the Sudoku. So you can't have a repeat in them and we need to repeat. So if we do a T, we have to do it like that. Oh, what about, what about you? That's also interesting because of that I'm noticing would allow this to be X, which I haven't thought about. Often when you get these tiling problems though, X is a very difficult digit to place. Although here it looks like there are quite a few places X could go. Uh, yeah, forget that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right, well, the, prob the problem we're having here is that there do seem to be a number of options for this 41. So although I've managed, to <laughs> I know what's in the 41, I've not even achieved any pencil marking at all. I'm going to make myself feel better like that. There we go. Um, OK, where next? Uh, seven, perhaps that's very low. Oh, in fact, seven is incredibly low. Oh, I don't know why this didn't register immediately, but it didn't. But I've got to fill five different digits with, well, five cells with digits that only sum to seven. So, oh, that's very restricted as well, because... Hang on, you can't even have any pentomino that has a run of three digits in a, either a column or a row is impossible. Because if, we, if, we, if, we, if any pentomino that goes through this square has three cells in a row, the minimum we could make these three squares would be a one, two, and a three, which add to six, but we still have two more cells to add to the pentomino. So we're gonna beat the total of seven if there is a run, hang on, I'm just going to go back to my list of pentominoes. How many pentominoes don't have a run of three or more digits in them? Double, W, F, no, F does have a run. This main strut is a run of three. That won't work. W might be okay, I think. X is not okay. Y is not okay. Wow, wow, that's absolutely beautiful. Right, so this has to be W, I think. And W might work, although it doesn't work like that. I can see that. Uh, hang on, how's W going to work? Like that, maybe. So W works because, let's just highlight this, um, there is no run within this W of three cells in a, in a, in a row. Look, that's two cells, two cells two cells, two cells. So what you can do here is something, well, you can, I can see what you have to do. You've got to do that. That's the only way that's ever going to work. So actually we, we must, in fact, this is, oh no, this isn't the shape. Ah, wow. Okay. This is wrong. It's not, it's not wrong that this is a W. I'm convinced this is a W. It's wrong that the W is there because this cell has been isolated. Actually, that's something I should, I'm just going to double check that we are doing a complete tiling. So if we have 12 pentominoes of five cells each, that's 60 cells. Actually, we might be better doing this by um, 
subtraction rather than addition because we know that a Sudoku is 9 by 9, that's 81. 81 minus 5 is 76, and there are 16 digits in the corners, I see. So we do get down to 60. So it is perfect tiling we're trying to achieve. Oh, I've had another thought. Sorry, my brain is obviously slow today. But the other thought I had is how many actual clues have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ah, okay. So there is one pentomino that doesn't have a number, which is slightly interesting. Okay, but that's, so we were correct. This version of W doesn't work. So, I sort of want to run it like that. That looks like it works, doesn't it? And that wouldn't isolate this cell. Um, how do we prove what this W looks like? We know that the W, not a, we, we know another thing about the W, not only is it of the shape W, but we know that however we draw it in the grid, it can't take three cells from an individual box of the Sudoku because then those three cells will be different and that's gonna break the total again. So what we couldn't do is a W like that not only because of this square, but obviously those would be a minimum of six and these two would break the total of seven. So if this square is in the W, I don't think this can be the tip of the W, can it? Let's just check that. No, that definitely, well, that's not the tip if I do that anyway, but um, anything like that is just nonsense. That's got five cells in one box. Anything like that isolates a cell and has three cells here. I don't see how to draw this at all if that's the tip. So this must be, so the W either, oh no, that doesn't work either. That's three cells in the same box. So this W is sort of the penultimate cell in the W. Let's make it purple and either the either the next the last cell on the w is here or it's here so if it's here the w has to well it doesn't go that way so it's got to go that way that isolates the cell no so it's here and once it's here it's not going there because that's three cells in the same box so it must go downwards and this is i think the only shape that the seven can live in and therefore we can fill in the, the cells so that it works um because obviously we're going to have to repeat the one three times. Um, right. So maybe... Ah, uh, right. Maybe what we do now... I'm just thinking actually about the top of the grid. And the reason I want to just think about the top of the grid is there seems to be a lot of empty real estate up here with no clues in it. And it looks to me like I can reach the top of the grid with this cell, this cell, maybe this cell, maybe this cell. Although this, can that actually go up to the top of the grid? I don't think this one can because this needs to have two cells, I think from this box in order to reach its complement of 41. So this cell, I don't think, can ever impact that, that sequence of digits. So it's going to be this one. This one and this one. Maybe that can just go straight up, though. Still tricky, actually, even if that does go straight up. That can take two cells of this 10-cell region at the top. This could take a maximum of three cells, and this can't take five cells. So I think that there is some, there is a pentomino somewhere up there that doesn't have a number attached to it. And yes, you're right, that is the most marginal deduction ever. Um, hmm. Right. Ah. Maybe I think about X's again. I'm just looking at these three clues. None of those three can be X anymore. This one I think could be X originally, but it can't be X now because of this cell. 
I don't think it could be X. I don't think that can be X. This definitely can't be X. It was going to run into the 29. This can't be X. You can never have a corner cell as an X because obviously if you try and get to it, it won't work. Uh, so that won't be X. That won't be X. That one. Well, that it couldn't be an X like that because that's all that's got five digits in the same box, which would be a minimum sum of 15. What about that? No, that doesn't work because these three cells would have to be a minimum of three, four and five because they already see one and two. What about, th no, that doesn't, ah, right, so this is not possible. This can't be the X. This can't be the X. This one. Ooh, this is actually really restricted. I don't know if this can be the X because the obvious X isolates this cell here, row six, column six. So... How would you draw an X if you don't do it like that? You can't do it like that. You can't do it like that. You can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah, there's simply no way. There is simply no way of drawing an X onto this, this position here. This one. That, that one can do that. Which would work if that was a U, actually. We looked at that before. That one, that one can't be. This is the only position that can be an X in this puzzle. And that X cannot be like this, and it cannot be like this, so it must be like this. There I've said it. I think that is an X. Now this now has to come out, because it has to take this square, otherwise we can't have achieved perfect tiling. That square takes this square. The 41, we know that its next digit must be in a different box than these three squares, and allow for a second eight or a second nine. So the only square it can be is that. So this is a U. These these are now, let's actually fill in these digits. They're all sevens, eights and nines. Those two have to be repeated. So they are an eight, nine pair. This shape now comes up there through that little gap. Oh, and now, the top of the grid's all of a sudden got very difficult, hasn't it? Because now I've got... Th it's this region at the top that I think is very difficult. I've got a sort of rectangle up there that needs to be filled. It's 10 cells large. This can contribute... Well, will contribute three cells to those 10 cells. This one can only contribute... Well, this is lovely. Right. This can only contribute two cells to those 10 those 10 blank cells. So this must contribute two, and this must contribute three, in order that there is a five cell region up here that's left behind that is the 12th pentomino. We have found the location exactly of the 12th, well, not exactly, but it's definitely in there. Um, we know that must come up. So this is either an L or an N. This is, oh, this has got lots of options. Um, oh, well, it's got lots of options, but one of the options it doesn't have is that one. Because then these two cells, one of them will be isolated, so it doesn't take that cell. So this, this so this cell is part of the extra, extra pentomino, isn't it? Oh, not red. Don't want to put red on top of orange. We'll make this square yellow. Yellow, I think, is pretty clear. So that could be an N, or it could be a... L, it could be a T, okay. I don't think we know quite how this one develops. Um, right, what next? We shall now address the problem of... How do you solve a problem like Maria? Or how do you solve a problem by Chris Moore? These are analogous questions. Um... I'm tempted to think about one of those squares, which has to belong to one of these two, because remember, everything below the hidden pentomino up here must attach to one of the clues that we've got. Oh, what about this square, actually? Yeah, that's that, that pentomino is forced now, or that tetromino needs one more cell. It can't be a U. We've already got a U. Um, so this is a different pentomino. Let's make that one yellow. 
And oh, I see, that being a different pentomino forces the shape of the 32. That's now a Z. So this one's coming out. So the own oh, this is beautiful. Actually, I think we're going to get this quite quickly now because this pentomino needs to attach to a number. The only number it can get to is that one. So this, and this can't be a W. Can it be an N? It could be an N. We haven't got an N anywhere else, or it could be an F. F is quite a tricky... It's a very low total as well, actually, isn't it? But if it was an N, this could be a 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, or 2, 1. And that would work. If it was an F, if it was this shape, this could be a 1, 2, 3. And this would have to be a 1, 2 pair. Again, that looks like it might work. Bobbins. Um, hmm. Okay. So what other difficult shapes have we got to place? Let me just go back to my list of shapes. So we have done Z. We've done X. We've done W. We've done U. Oh, we haven't done I. Let me go back and look at I. Hang on. Right, right, this is lovely. Okay, where on earth in this puzzle do you put the I pentomino? It's got to be somewhere, and it's I, if it's attached to a number, there's nowhere to put it. None of these numbers has enough space. This one can only be a four cell straight line. This one can only be a three cell straight line. This could be a four cell straight line. This could be a four cell straight line, but none of them can be a five cell straight line. So the five cell straight line is at the top of the grid. And how do you make a five cell straight line? Only like that. And that's going to force everything. Now we've got an N, a T. So that, what's that going to do? That's going to stop this being an N. So this is an F. This one comes out here. Two, three. Um, let's go back to my pentomino list to cross things off. So I've done the I. I've done the F, I've done the N. I've got L, P, and now I did T. I've got L, P, V, and Y. L, P, V, and Y. L, P, V, and Y. That can't be an L. Oh. Yeah, okay, this is interesting. Or well, the simple way of seeing this, this 39 is, does it take this square? The answer is it must take this square because otherwise it's going to be an N. We've already got an N, so it does take that square. And now its fifth square is either here for a Y or here for an L. If we make an L, this is cells isolated. So we must make a Y like this. Should probably have chosen a different color. We'll change that to blue. Um, well, that looks like it's... Yeah, in fact, I can see that I can see how this tiles now. This is going to be a P, this is going to be an L, and this is going to be, sorry, a V, and that's going to be an L. But let's try and prove it. So those two would be forced. This cell can't be part of that or that, or this can not, not reach a total of five. So that's going to have to take that cell. Um, this can't be an N, so it's not those, so it must take that cell. And now it has to take that cell as its fifth cell. So those three cells are now forced. These four cells are now forced. Um, we'll use yellow over this side. That means those two cells are forced and this cell's forced. And there we go. We've done our tiling. Isn't that beautiful? That's really lovely logic. I can understand why this has a 100% rating because it was, it used lots of different logic in a very natural way. Really good stuff. And now... Now we've got Sudoku to do, and I'm tempted to say this 9 is where we start, but that might be wrong. Yeah, but I'm going to start here, because I can see something obvious. Those three squares have got to be a 1, 2, 3 triple, adding to 6. Oh no, hang on. No, that's not the way to do this, actually. The way to do it is to note those three squares are a 1, 2, 3 triple adding to six, and these therefore have to be a one, two pair. If you did it the other way, it would have been possible for those two digits to be the same number, and that's not what I was trying to prove at all. So this one gives us a two here, a one here. This is now a one, three pair. This is a two. Um, okay. 
That's nearly useful, but not quite. The 21 might be a bit restricted now, because you can't put 1s and 2s in it. So that would be a minimum of 3, 4, 5, adding to 12. This would be a minimum of 3, 4. Oh, not 3, no, 4, 5, adding to 9. Right, OK, lovely. So this has to be 4, 5, adding to 9. This has to be 3, 4, 5, adding to 12, in order that we can keep the total of the whole pentomino down to 21. So now we know those squares. Oh, this is lovely again. Right, now let's look at the 39 here, which has got four cells in it, which are the digits 6, 7, 8, and 9, which add to 30. So that has to be a 9 to get to 39, and that immediately backs into the rest of the cage again. It gives us a repeated 9, a 6, 7, 8 triple, um, and a pause. I really, I keep looking at that 35 thinking, oh, it's got to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but that's not right because you could repeat a digit here in, in one of those three. Okay, so where do we look now? Is there an easy way to... Oh, we can get this digit by maths using the secret. We've got 21 there, 22 plus 17... That's 39. What does a box of a Sudoku add up to? Well, we only tell special people this, but it's 45. That's what you get if you add the numbers 1 to 9 up. So that square is going to have to be a 6 to add up. So these four squares add up to 26 without using... Ah, 26 without using 9? That's got to be 5, 6, 7 and 8. That's the only way you can do that. This 9 is giving me this digit, that's 8, that's 9, that's 7, that's 9, that's 8. These two squares are now a 5, 6 pair, I think. They can't be 7 or 8 anymore, so they're 5, 6. These two squares are now 7, 8. There's an 8 here. 8, 7. We're cooking with gas, actually. Um, which is appropriate, given what we were talking about earlier with gas puzzles. 1, 2, 3 and 4 here. I uh, don't know if we can find the order of those. Um, we've got, actually, that is a, is that a quintuple on 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? I think it is in row 8. So this square can't be a 5. It's going to have to be 6. That's going to be 5. That fixes the 4 and the 5 here. So this square is forced to be a 3. This square is forced to be a 5. That's forced to be a 4. The 3 gives me the 3 and the 1. Now I've got a 3-4 pair here, which fixes these squares as a 1-2 pair. Those as a 3-4 pair. We've got a 1-2 pair to complete row 9. These squares here are 7 and 8 to complete row 8. And therefore we should be able to work out what those are. 6 and 9. Uh, so these add up to 15. These squares add up to 20. Right, here's something nice. Is there a 9 in those three cells? And the answer is yes, because if there isn't, how do you make three cells add up to 20 in a Sudoku? They'd have to be 5, 7 and 8, and that would break that square. So there is a 9 in one of those, which means that square is resolved. So that's a 6. Um, the other two cells in here add up to 11 and aren't 5, 6 or 2, 9. So this is either 4, 7 or 3, 8. OK, um, I can't immediately see how to do that. Right, let's pause for breath. That's not 9, there's a 9 here. And just have a look and see if there's anything obvious we can do. Um, that square's got to be a 7, 8 or a 9. C6 in the row. Oh, that square's a naked single. It sees 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. So that square's got to be 6. So those squares are 7s, 8s, and 9s. 23. Uh, 23 plus 7 is 8. Can't have a 1 or a 2. In fact, these three squares can't be 1s or 2s. So this has a minimum value of 3, 4. That has a minimum value of 3. So these three squares have a minimum value. Yeah, these three squares have a minimum value of 10. 10 plus this domino has to equal 23. Well, there's no way this can be any higher than 7 then. This has to be 13. That's really lovely. So this square is a 3. 
and this these two squares are a three four pair which means that squares a five to complete row three of the grid oh i see and now we can fill that square in with a seven eight or a nine because we've also got a one two three four five quintuple in column four So that square there is at least six and it's on the bulb of a thermometer. So this is six or seven. Oh, lovely. That's lovely, actually. That can't be seven because if it's seven, this thermometer is going to have to go seven, eight, nine. And now this cell's got a problem. So that's going to have to be a six. This square's got to be seven or eight. That square's got to be eight or nine. Uh... Bobbins. <laughs> um, oh, although seven here means that's not a seven, and this is not a seven. So there's now an eight nine pair in row one, which means that can't be an eight. So this is seven. This is not seven. This is not six. This squares a seven eight or a nine as well. These squares are fours, eights, or nines to complete box two. So there's now a four in this cage. So we've now got a 24, and we've got a five plus one of these being a four is nine. So the other cells, five plus four is nine, is, are adding up to 15. Hmm. Do we know what that square is? Two, three, or four? Yes, we all. Yes, we do. Look at column seven. Those three squares were two, three, four, triple, just to complete the column. And that one sees three and four. So that's got to be a two. So now, now we've got three cells in this 24 cage. I shouldn't really call it a cage. Or at tw this pentomino that add up to 11. So the other two cells add up to 13. Oh, and they're either eight or nine. So this is a five or a four. Oh, it's not a five because that's just going to re repeat five immediately. So that must be four, which makes that four. And now this has to be nine in order to make those two squares add up to 13. Um, and we're getting this done. That, now this is eight. That's nine. That's eight. Eight here means this is not eight. So this is six or seven, just to complete column six. And what should we do next? We are, we've almost done all the penton. Oh, well, we can't do this one because we don't know what it adds up to. But we've very nearly, I think, reduced this to being a Sudoku problem of all things. Ah, the eight here means we know what these three cells are because two of them had to add up to 11 and they now can't be two, nine, five, six, or three, eight. So they must be four, seven, nine here. And that square has to therefore be seven. May not know which of these is four and which of these is nine. What about this row then? We need three, five, and six. In fact, yeah, in fact, look at those squares. They are a three, five, six triple as well. This is three, five, or six. This is three or five. Six here means that's not six. Um, if these are three, five, and six, and that's eight, we can presumably work out what this digit is. So why don't we do that? 14, 22, that's got to be a seven. That fixes this as a six, that is a seven, that is an eight, that is a six. Now I've got a three, five pair here, so that becomes a six. And now I've got a three, five pair here. This is no longer, oh, that is a nine. That fixes a nine and a four. That fixes a three and a five and a three. Good grief. Now these are five and eight, which we can do. So eight, five, five, three go into the grid. This square here has got to be a 4 by Sudoku. Those two squares have got to be 2 and 7, which we can also do. Good Lord. 4 gives me the 4 and the 3. 
these squares here are 3 and 5, I think, which we can do. 3 and 5 go in the grid. Get that digit's known. One of these is a 1. One of these is a 6. 6 here tells us the order. So 6 and 1 go in the grid. Um, 7 gives me 7 and 8. 3 gives me 3 and 4. Let's try not to fill in any erroneous digits. That's a 5-2 pair. That fixes the 2 and the 1. Puts a 1 here. And that square there is an 8. And I think that is the puzzle solved. Beautiful. Really, really, really enjoyable puzzle. Nothing fiendishly complicated. Just a lot of lovely different sorts of logic. Especially with the pentomino stuff at the start. I really also, though, admired the way that the Sudoku that was built on the sort of the back of the Pentomino puzzle was, it was just enjoyable. It was a series of very natural logical deductions. And obviously Chris has put a lot of thought into making that part of the solve smooth. It's really accomplished actually. I'm pretty sure this is gonna get some lovely comments because I think many of you are gonna enjoy that just as much as I did. Thanks so much for watching. And I'm sorry about my voice, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.